global webcasting for a worldwide audience. Hello and welcome to the A to Z show on Radio Lewis. I'm Jonathan and we have now reached the P's in our journey through the musical alphabet. We have a packed show and as usual a variety of genres, including three artists that I have recently seen live or am about to. So let's kick things off in true rock and roll style with Primal Scream. from 1994 and I played that for Hugh who finds it impossible to stay still to that track. The band were formed in Glasgow and are fronted by Bobby Gillespie who was formerly the drummer of the Jesus and Mary chain. Now to calm things down a bit here's Pink Floyd with some important advice.
1973, or Breeze, from the hugely successful Dark Side of the Moon album. I've seen Pink Floyd three times live, the first time being a free concert on Parliament Hill Fields in 1968, I think. Roger Waters married the art teacher at my old school, and she's on the cover of the Umma album. In 1965, they changed their name from the tea set when they discovered that another band with the same name was due to play at one of their gigs. The name Pink Floyd is a combination of the names of two blues musicians, Pink Anderson and Floyd Council. An article in the Sunday Times stated, and I quote, A pop group called the Pink Floyd played throbbing music while a series of bizarre coloured shapes flashed on a huge screen behind them. Apparently very psychedelic. Next up, it's a real wild child. You wild one, wild one, wild one, wild one. Wild one. Wild one. Like a fool, like a fool, like a fool. 
That, of course, was James Newell Osterbury Jr., also known as Iggy Pop, from the 1986 album Blah Blah Blah. I'm going to see him perform in July and really looking forward to it. Apparently, Iggy was a conventional teenager who didn't smoke, didn't drink and didn't get high. His parents bought him a drum set when he was at school and he went on to play blues clubs in the Chicago area. The seeds of his stage persona were sown when he saw The Doors perform in 1967. Besides Jim Morrison, other influences were Mick Jagger and James Brown. In the 1970s, Iggy became good friends with David Bowie. They worked together musically and went to West Berlin together to wean themselves off drugs. Not sure if that worked. Now, someone else who used to be really wild, but musically at least, is much calmer now. Robert Plant. Robert Plant and Alison Krauss there with a Lucinda Williams song, Can't Let Go. I'm sure Lucinda Williams will feature in the W's show. That was from the 2021 album Raise the Roof, his second album with the bluegrass star Krauss. Plant, of course, the singer with Led Zeppelin, who existed from 1968 until 1980. After years of reunion rumours, Led Zepp performed a two-hour set at the Ahmet Ertegun tribute concert. 
Despite enormous public demand, Plant declined a $200 million offer to tour with Led Zeppelin after the show. Now, a band I saw at the Black Deer Festival recently. It's Chrissy Hind and the Pretenders. The reason we're here As man and woman Is to love each other Take care of each other When love walks in the room Everybody stand up Oh, it's good, good, good Like Brigitte Bardot Look at the people in the streets, in the bars. We are all of us in the gutter. Some of us are looking at the stars. Look round the room. Life is unkind. We fall, but we keep getting. Message of Love there from 1981, one of a string of hits they had between 79 and 82. As regular listeners will know, drug-related deaths feature heavily in this show. The Pretenders lost guitarist Honeyman Scott in 1982, and bassist Farndon was found drowned in his bathtub in 1983. However, the band continued with replacement members and appear, on recent evidence, to be going strong, having returned to their punk roots. Now someone else I've seen live in the last week, and that in the unlikely setting of Hassocks. From San Francisco, it's Chuck Prophet.
Petrified Inner City Technological Man from 2014's Night Surfer album. Chuck used to be a member of Green on Red. Chuck him out. Now, the Propellerheads with a guest vocalist. <laughs> There's something evolving Whatever may come The world keeps revolving They say the next big thing is here That the revolution's near But to me it seems quite clear That it's all just a little bit of history repeating History Repeating, a 1997 song featuring Shirley Bassey on vocals. The Propellerheads were an electronic music duo formed in Bath who only produced one album. Now for a little jazz. This is Gregory Porter. Unreroute the rivers, let the damned water beat. There's some people down the way that's thirsty, so let the liquid spirit free. The people are thirsty because of man's unnatural hand. Watch what happens when the people catch wind When the water hits the banks of that hard, dry land Clap your hands now Go ahead and clap your hands now Clap your hands now Go ahead and clap your hands now mm -hmm. Get ready for the wave 
It might strike like a final flood The people haven't drank in so long The water won't even make mud After it comes It might come with a steady flow Grab the roots of the tree Down by the river Dip your cup when your spirit's low Clap your hands now Go ahead and clap your hands now Clap your hands now Clap your hands now Dip down and take a drink And fill your water tank Dip down and take a drink And fill your water tank Down the way that's thirsty Let the liquid spirit free The folk are thirsty Cause of man's unnatural hand Watch what happens When the people catch wind Of the water hidden banks Of hard dry land Clap your hands now Clap your hands now Go ahead and clap your hands now Clap your hands now Dip down and take a drink And fill your water tank Dip down, take a drink And fill your water tank Liquid spirit Liquid spirit Liquid spirit Liquid spirit Clap your hands now Liquid Spirit. That was Liquid Spirit from the 2014 album of the same name. Porter was one of eight children and his mother was a minister in California and encouraged him to sing in church from an early age. Now, where have we heard that before? When his mother died, he was 21 and from her deathbed, she entreated him, sing, baby, sing. Next up, Robert Palmer. Is it? 
který stěle tlaký jen diskou. stylish Robert Palmer with Johnny and Mary from the 1980 Clues album. In the early 70s, Palmer was in the band Vinegar Joe with Elky Brooks. In 1974, his first solo album, Sneaking Sally Through the Alley, was recorded and produced by Lal George of Little Feet. He produced 14 more studio albums before he died of a heart attack aged 54. Now, I'm not sure how you'd categorise this next outfit... It's Penguin Cafe Orchestra. was Giles Farnaby's Dream from 1976, their debut album. 
The Penguin Cafe Orchestra, a little bit of a niche outfit, were founded by English guitarist Simon Jeffers and cellist Helen Liebman. The group recorded and performed for 14 years before Jeffers died of a brain tumour in 1996. Another band founded in the 70s, but with a very different sound, was the Psychedelic Furs. in Pink from 1981. The Psychedelic Furs were a post-punk band founded in London by lead vocalist Richard Butler and his brother Tim on bass. The band took a long break in the early 90s but reformed in 2001 and continued to tour worldwide. From Pretty in Pink to the Pretty Things. I'm 
met this shit the other day. And then to me, she says she stayed. I got this bag, just like a cave. And we had a little way. Bring Me Down from 1964. They were founded by Dick Taylor, who previously had been in a band fellow Sidcup Art College student Keith Richards, along with Mick Jagger. Influenced by Bo Diddley, the Pretty Things were a key part of the London blues rock scene. And that's probably why they do sound a bit like early stones. Over the years, they've undergone multiple personnel changes. They've had 34 members of the band and quite a few deaths. Well, they are getting on a bit. I saw them play at Lewis Town Hall a few years back. They were good, but they looked like an aged mafia hit squad. One of the band's early member was drummer Viv Prince, but this is a slightly better known Prince.
Raspberry Beret by Prince Rogers Nelson. Yes, Prince was his real name, named after his father's band. Born and raised in Minneapolis, he signed a record deal with Warner Brothers at the age of 19. Estimates of the complete number of songs written by him range from 500 to well over 1,000. He sold over 100 million records worldwide. He also had a collection of 121 custom guitars. Prince died after accidentally overdosing on fentanyl at his Paisley Park home in 2016 at the age of 57. Now, from American funk to Irish punk, it's the Pogues. not typical Pogues, but that was Tuesday morning from 1993. The band evolved after Shane McGowan met Peter Spider Stacy in the toilets at a Ramones gig. After recruiting other members, they played their first gig at po- as Pogue Mahone in 1982. In 1985, they released Rum, Sodomy and the Lash, produced by Elvis Costello. Their next album included Fairy Tale of New York, a duet with Kirsty McColl, that was voted best Christmas song of all time on several occasions. However, Shane McGowan was becoming increasingly unreliable due to his drinking, and in 1991, the band sacked him. 
Other members left, and after recording their seventh and final studio album, the band called it a day in 1996. They reformed in 2001, but their last performance, to date anyway, was in Hyde Park in 2014. Now, another singer who had substance misuse issues, Graham Parsons. Feeling Blue from 1973's GP, recorded with Emmy Lou Harris. Born Ingram Cecil Connor III, he described his genre as cosmic American music. He joined the Birds in early 68, and after leaving them, he and Chris Hillman formed the Flying Burrito Brothers, but Parsons was fired from the band in early 1970. It was scarcely surprising that he had problems with alcohol and drugs, both his parents were alcoholics, his father committed suicide when Graham was 12, and his sister died of cirrhosis on the day he graduated from high school. To add to that, he was hanging out with Keith Richards during the recording of Exile on Main Street. Probably not a good influence. Parsons' death in the Joshua Tree National Park in 1973 is both an extraordinary and complex story, as is the subsequent removal of his body. No room to go into details here, but worth checking out. He was 26 when he died. Back to the UK now, and it's Pulp. I two hours before we met I didn't know your name Oh, what it looked like yet oh, I could have stayed at home And gone to bed I could have gone to see A film in the stars You might have changed your mind And seen your friend I'm 
Something changed from 1995's Different Class. Polk were formed in 1978 by Jarvis Cocker, then aged 15, and Peter Dalton, then 14. The band struggled during the 80s, but gained prominence in the mid-90s with their disco-influenced pop rock, coupled with kitchen sink drama-style lyrics. In 2002, they announced their demise, but there have been two subsequent reunions, and they are still going strong, touring this year. We're now the, near the end of the show, and next time we'll be looking at the Q's and R's. As you can imagine, there aren't many Q's, so I'll combine the two. I'll leave you with Tom Petty, who sadly died in 2017. Another accidental overdose involving fentanyl. Thanks for listening, and hope you enjoyed the show. This is Running Down a Dream. <laughs>
Radio Lewis. Local community community webcasting.